One of the biggest critiques of web frameworks is that they only support the happy path. Customization is simply more difficult than it's worth. I'm going to show you two features in the Phoenix ecosystem that let us break out of strict model binding and build truly flexible interfaces. This video is part of a series where I'm building a Phoenix app from scratch. You'll probably want to start from the beginning. As always, the code is on GitHub with a link in the description. Let's get started. So far, we have an app that tracks budgets, collecting transactions, and displaying balances. Users can invite collaborators to keep them accountable and record spending together. But when I think about the user's journey, there's something missing. If I create a new budget, it starts out completely empty. If I want to give myself $100 per month, why should I have to go to each month individually, submit the form, and move on to the next one? It would be much nicer to do something like this. Ask the user what their monthly budget is in an optional input. If I put that $100 in and hit submit, it should put a funding transaction in the beginning of each month. The most naive way of doing this would be to add a text input, set it to number, and handle it separately in the event handler. But what happens when things go wrong? The first time I showed this to one of my friends, he immediately typed in a huge number into the box and crashed the page. Naturally, I tried to add validation and realized I was probably not doing this in the right way. Phoenix forms do best when they're backed by Ecto. And as I've been saying throughout the series, Ecto is more than your typical ORM. And what I was looking for, didn't know this at the time, was an embedded schema. You see, there's no rule that says Ecto needs to store everything it's given in a database. Embedded schema lets us describe data shapes and has access to the entire array of change set validations without needing to specify a database table for persistence. That's because they're designed to operate in memory. It's also possible to store their results in JSON map columns in regular database schemas, but we'll skip past that use case today. So let's get this wired into a form and start building on top of our new building block, the embedded schema. Right now, the create budget dialogues form operates directly on the budget schemas change set. To prepare for the new experience, let's introduce a new change set for the form. In the budgie context, I'll add a new forms directory, creating a module called create budget. There's nothing special about this forms directory. It just seemed like a reasonable name to give this kind of module. Anyway, I'll paste in an implementation and we can walk through it. This schema embeds a budget. When we run this change set, it'll treat everything under the budget key as though it were directly passed into the budget's own change set function. We inherit all the validations and logic from that change set. For now, we'll just directly insert the results of that embedded budget if the whole change set is valid. If it's invalid, the width block won't match and an error change set tuple will be returned. And if you're lost, bear with me. It'll make more sense once we're using it. Let's see how this changes our dialogue component. Everywhere that we were interacting with the change set, we're now going to operate on the form. So I'll alias in the form and then set our change set to be the new create budget. Then under validate, uh, the key name is going to be create budget. This is because it comes from the inflection of the module name. Then when we're doing our validation, instead of doing change budget, again, we're going to use the create budget forms change set. And finally, let's switch out this save method to use the form. Over in the HTML template, we need to make a change too. To make this work with the form system, instead of just taking in the form and reading keys like name and description, we're gonna swap this out with inputs for. This allows us to say anything under the budget is now gonna be a new form and we can access that uh, directly. And if everything went right, I should be able to go over into the app, new budget, and create budget, and it'll work the exact same way as before, but with some more complexity. But it'll be an easy place to start doing interesting things. To add a new field to the form, we will update the embedded schema over in createBudget.ex. Instead of just embedding a budget, we will also have a decimal field called period funding amount. 
We'll also add a little attribute here, setting the maximum amount that we want in our validations. Then in our change set, in addition to the cast embed, we are going to add some numeric validation and cast that period funding amount into the mix. And now it's easy enough to add a new form input bound to that field. So down here below the inputs for the budget subform, I'll add in the form field for period funding amount. With these two little changes, the field exists and is validated. If I go back and create a new budget, I have this funding amount, and if I make it negative, it'll say it has to be greater than or equal to zero. If I make it really, really big, it'll complain about that as well. And well, if I submit this form, it's not gonna do anything yet. Before this actually creates transactions, I want you to know about another feature, Ecto Multi. Recall that a change set is a structure that describes a set of changes to a model. A multi levels this up by describing a group of operations. Think of it as like a mega change set. In addition to database operations like create, read, update, and delete, multi lets us run whatever functions we'd like using the run function. And the best part, a multi runs within a database transaction. If anything fails, the whole transaction rolls back and the changes are undone. It's a clever alternative to how database transactions are performed in other languages and lends well to declarative pipe-based designs that are common in Elixir. In fact, our app already uses multi in the generated auth code. When we reset the user's password, we not only update the user's password, but we delete all of their session tokens. Following this pattern, let's use a multi in our form and get this budget funded. So over in our form, where we do our submit operation, and previously we were just grabbing the budget and inserting it into the repo, let's do something a little different. Every multi starts with ecto multi new. This just creates a new instance, a box for operations. Then we pipe this into a function like insert, passing a name for the step and the struct to insert the budget value from our change set. If we stop here, we are just inserting the budget like before. Now, after it's constructed, a multi needs to be passed into a repo transaction function to actually run. Just like a change set, a multi is just a set of instructions. The repo is what actually gets the job done. The result of a successful multi is an okay tuple. It looks something like this, where we have the okay, and then we have a map that's keyed on this name that was provided to the instruction. I'm gonna include a bunch of tests in the linked pull request, but let's just add one to make sure that we're creating a budget as expected, and I can show you a little bit more of that structure. So over in test, under budgie, we'll add a new test and paste in a single submit test that makes sure we create a budget. In my terminal, I'll run this test file and it succeeds. So at this point, when we submit this form using createBudget.submit, we get back an OK tuple that contains that budget inside of a map. EctoMulti's run function takes in one of those names and then a two argument function which takes in the database repo module that we're running in and the results of the operations that came before it. So in our form, let's make a little space and make it a little more complicated. Inside of the constructed multi, we're now registering a step called fund budget, which takes in the budget from this previous step and then maps over each of the periods of the budget, inserting a transaction at the beginning of that period in the amount corresponding to our validated period funding amount. Then we return an OK tuple with transactions and that'll be in the result set under fund budget. Now there's just one more step. We have to update our dialog to accept a map where budget is this result budget instead of taking in just a budget directly. And maps need to have a percent sign in Elixir. So if I go in and submit the form, here, let's fill it out and give it $100 every month, create budget, and we've got $100 every single month. And because it is June at the time of recording, the balance is 600. 
In total, it'll have 1200 in funding, and there's one transaction every single month called recurring funding. And if the funding step fails, the budget and its periods would be rolled back. On that note, there's actually an issue in the implementation worth addressing that might show what I'm talking about. What happens if we don't pass a funding amount at all? Well, that'll cause the amount to be null, which is going to blow up our insert operations. With my terminal open and the server running, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll go ahead and submit this without typing anything into the funding box, and things are gonna blow up. Let's look at the logs. When we submitted the form, we started inserting a budget and its periods, and then there was an error, and so we rolled back those changes. This is that database transaction that I was talking about. The issue is that the amount was null, and uh, the amount can't be blank within the transaction. But we don't even need to try and insert transactions if they don't type into that box. To support this, I wanna do a little refactor because right now the submit function is a little gnarly. First, let's pull that construction of the multi into a private helper function. So instead of this all being in submit, we now have a function called construct multi, which has that fund budget and budget insertion. Then we can pull the funding into its own function so that we're not defining an inline. So now when we construct the multi, what we're running in fund budget is actually this private function called fund budget if necessary, much cleaner. And as is pretty common in Elixir, this opens up the door for a multi-headed function. We'll add another declaration here where when the period funding amount is nil, just return an okay with an empty list. And now if I submit the page without setting an amount, the page won't crash. But if I do set an amount, we'll get a result that has funding. Unlike other frameworks, Phoenix allows you to decouple your persistence from your form validation and truly allows for a custom experience when you need something a little more advanced. Some of you are probably gonna point out that this change could have been structured as an association without a multi. You're probably right, but the whole purpose of this series is to show that Phoenix Live View is ready for building real apps. Even when you run into rough edges, there is a way forward. Until next time, this has been Code and Stuff. Thanks for watching.